Welcome back to the Leaders Talk podcast, where we talk to leaders in every industry, from athletes to CEOs to business leaders to everybody, to see how they got to where they are today. And today, I have the pleasure of interviewing William Roberts. What's good, homie? William Roberts (laughs) is from St. Thomas Aquinas and currently holds big D1 offers such as Miami, FIU, was another one? Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Syracuse, Colorado. The list goes on. The list goes on pretty much. But like you know, more importantly, we're going to find out what type of leader he is and some of the trials and tribulations and what he's learned into becoming who he is today. So we got to start off with the most important question you'll ever be asked. Uh Coke or Pepsi? Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi, man. Oh my God. Thank God. This is documentation purpose. You're the first one to ever say anything. I was asked Coke or Pepsi and there was like, neither, 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 neither. I got Miller Lite the other day, but... Miller Lite? Yeah, I got Miller Lite the other day, but... Pepsi, dog. Pepsi over Coke to me. But one thing, though, my grand, my grandparents, they always like Coke more. So maybe when I get older, I may, I may, may like, like I may Maybe like Coke old, Maybe old hat yeah, thing. Yeah, they, they, like they like Coke more than Pepsi, but, hey, I like Pepsi more, All right. man. So we got to go to a second important question. <laughs> candy or chocolate? Candy or chocolate. See, I'm not a... I don't eat candy or chocolate, but what candies are we talking about? Because... I mean, you just say you don't eat candy. I don't, I don't eat. I don't eat neither, but it's some that I like. But okay. can, candy over chocolate. Right? Okay, okay. Candy. Over and chocolate. then, third, Monopoly or sorry, Monopoly. Hey, we got it. A Monopoly. businessman. We like that. Yeah, that that's how it is. Most definitely. So, <laughs> usually, what I do is that we're gonna get on this timeline mm-hmm. from when you're born to now, and then ultimately the third stage is gonna be your future. Mm-hmm. Is gonna be into three stages. So the okay. first stage. I want to kind of talk about your childhood, your upbringing, what your parents had on you. So mm-hmm. were you the, the type of kid that you let the line when you were in like third grade, fifth, second grade, like you always let the line? Yeah, yeah. So one thing, I took that serious, by the way, like <laughs> line leader and door holder, bro. bro. Like you were serious about that? I was serious about that. Like, bro, yeah. Being in the front of the line was serious to me. I hate it when I didn't get picked. Because, you know, they used to have a, they Yeah, used I know to what pick. you're talking yeah, about. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I used to hate it when I didn't get picked, though. Yeah. I had to be one of the three. You know, you had yeah. the line leader. The door holding. Do you have to do it all the way in the oh, back? No, 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 just, the back. That's yeah. make sure the line's straight. If yeah. I wasn't one of them three, I ain't like. I ain't yeah, that's crazy. Loki brought up memories. <laughs> but <laughs> I say that crazy. because there was um, I don't know if you know Pastor Mike Top, but he pretty much said he was like, oh, like a lot of times, like our leadership in infancy is the little things that we didn't really pay mind to. Yeah. But then when you grow into that, that was like the early phase of leadership. So yeah, that's why I asked. Definitely, definitely. I'm serious. <laughs> and what type of kid were you like in middle school? Like, if I was best friends with Will, who would Will be in middle school? So, in middle school, I was more of, like, I was a funny person. Like, I made a lot of jokes. I played around a lot. Yeah. But, like, if the teacher ain't like us, bro, we probably was getting kicked out of the class. Cause yeah. I played a lot. Like, yeah. I played around. Yeah. And I was never really serious. Like, I didn't take nothing serious unless, like, somebody, like, disrespected me. Or something. Yeah. Like, I was always a playful, good yeah. person. Yeah, Uplifting like genuine. Beer. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I always played around a yeah. lot. And when did you, around one age, did you start playing football? Like, you started, like... I, I, don't, I don't know what age, but it's whatever age you start playing, like... You as started, soon as, as, you, as soon as you as, could, as, you started yeah, out the game? As soon as you can, yeah. And was that something kind of that you were, like, you know how sports, like, the parents kind of give you sports? Was it yeah. forced upon you, or you're like, hey, It no, wasn't. My, my mom gave me options. Mm-hmm. She, she actually told me when I was three months old, I used to hold the ball. For like, real? Yeah, I used to hold the ball when I was Damn. three months. But she she let That's me crazy. choose between basketball, football, baseball. I think I tried. I don't, I never tried soccer, but it was out of those three for sure. Yeah, that's always I, like the the yeah. three. Yeah. I was good at basketball. Oh. I never I never liked baseball, but I was good at basketball. Yeah, baseball's good. a little boring for I, any baseball yeah, fans I, out there. Yeah, most, <laughs> that's boring. We not like, even gonna talk so much about hate that. about that. We not even gonna talk about that. But. Growing up, I played basketball and, and football, yeah. like, season to season. Like, when, yeah, yeah. when football went out, I played basketball. So, yeah. that's what I always played growing up. Yeah. And kind of, what did your your parents ultimately leave with you? Like, what were some of the qualities that they, like, instilled in you that you still carry on like, today? Like, in life, they always tell me to have thick skin, no matter what. As in, like, stay strong, no matter what. Like, it's about... It's about solidarity, just being being a strong young man, because I'm a young man at the end of the day. What, what, what ways do you mean solidarity? Like, go like, a little bit more in depth with that. Like, when I say, like, stay with your people, stay strong, like, stay, like, keep it 100. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, be, always be real. 
Like that that's that's what it's always been about, especially with my dad. That's what he yeah. That's what he taught me a lot about. Yeah. And talking a little bit about your dad, you know, your dad very uh-huh. successful Rick Ross. It's yeah. he, he did he have kind of like in your head, you're kind of on a, a pedestal, so you see his success and it motivates you, or were you kind of like you're like, Oh, I can never reach that or did it inspire you to do more like what? How did that yeah. relationship how that, that affect that relationship he always taught me I'm not I'm not a woman, so he's never gonna take care of me my whole, he's not gonna take yeah. care of me my whole life. Yeah. So he always taught me that one day, like, I gotta run the show. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's gonna be, he go pass the torch to me. Yeah. I gotta make a name for myself. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So he always taught me to work hard and be my own man, whatever, like, no, no matter what people tell me, just yeah. be my own man. Cause yeah. he gonna be successful, but his success don't, don't make me. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I gotta, yeah. be, I'm, a, I'm my own person. Yeah. yeah. That's real. Yeah. Because you hear that a lot. Like, a lot of people, they um, they come from, like, <clears throat> their parents were successful in business and yeah. being a slave, whatever it may be, and they were just successful. And sometimes it's, like, a hit or miss. But obviously, mm-hmm. your parents did a good job because you're seeing as, like, oh, you're not going to be passed on anything. So you really yeah, got to work for it and make yeah. a name for yourself. Mm-hmm. But now, so we got to know a little bit about, like, the funny, charismatic, hey. genuine, likes pep- Pepsi over Coke. Well, now to the second stage of life. We're gonna be from high school, so freshman, freshman year, all the way up to where you are now, pretty much. Yeah. So coming in as a, a freshman, mm-hmm. you're already like, you're. You, I think you didn't start on varsity, but you're already getting PT on varsity. No, I was, I was, I, I started. Oh, you started I, freshman yeah, year. I started for a little bit. You know, I was, I was in a rotation, but it That's, was, it was yeah. some games I started, yeah, yeah, yeah. some games I didn't. But so yeah, I was out here early. So what, what kind of effect did it have on you having so much exposure early on? It was it was different because I was always used to being like the big dog of my team. You from know what I'm from little league. Yeah, from little league. I yeah. was always used to being a big dog, basically running the team basically. Yeah. But coming out here, I'm the young dude, like like I was more quiet. Like I still was joking around, but I only yeah. joked like with the people like I knew, like with the seniors I knew and stuff. Yeah. Like just being the the, the young dude around older guys, you know, like these is grown men. I'm out of I just came yeah. from little league. These is yeah. grown men. Like I never yeah. been around this type of atmosphere, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So being out here so early, it basically made me more of a leader than what, what I already was. What type of, did you realize like when you're a freshman, you started getting a lot of PT that you were like, oh, okay, like I need a, I want to be in that position. I don't want to be in that leadership position. And what were some of the things that you took from them as their, as your leader? Yeah. So when all the seniors, you know, when I was a freshman, I still didn't, I took stuff serious, but I'm still a perfect yeah, dude. So. Yeah. All the like the senior, this senior. I never understood it, but yeah. now me being a senior, like I really yeah, wish you feel it. I could thank yeah. all of them, like, yeah. like, cause I never understood it. Yeah. But like now that I'm a senior, is real, like. Yeah. It's real. Bro. And what type of leader do you want to be to the freshman will? That there's a will coming in right now. What type of leader, what role model do you want to be to him? That's a that's a good question. What type of leader? <laughs> what type of leader would I want to be to him? Cause there's people that look up to you without you yeah. realizing. So without, what do you, what do you want to be? Without realizing at all, just just work hard, bro. That's that's really what it is. It just it just go take hard work. Don't give up. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, out here, if I was out here with freshman Will, I probably would have to check him a couple times because he he'd get out of line. Yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, you think that that personality kept you like grounded? Yeah. Because you're yeah, always yourself. Yeah, like yeah, you never yeah. change for anything. Because I yeah. mean, I was always. I, I stayed myself. I never. That's real. Yeah. Yeah. I never changed around nobody. Like, just because yeah. they was older than me, I wasn't go back down the tower away. Like, yeah. I was the I was the only freshman. I was like, standing up to them. Like that was safe. Mm. That would make a funny joke to them in front of everybody. Yeah. Like nobody else. And would they do recognize that because yeah. I think like someone in that position that hold up, he has like the boss to speak to me. He has a boss, so yeah. they respect them more. Yeah. So, like, so it make it, it it really give you a better relationship with the senior, with the yeah. older guys, especially being a freshman. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because a lot of seniors don't. Senior and freshman like relationship on the football field isn't always yeah like, it's not always yeah, strong it's yeah. not it's not always like that, but when you had somebody like me that's go you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. Like, like, so your personality helped you yeah it, it helped me a lot because I was a lot of them still friends with me to this day I'm still friends with a lot of those guys to this day that's good yeah yeah so to kind of spice it up what was one of your favorite memories so far being on STA football like, STA football my favorite memory. Like, it was a game, maybe a practice that was just funny. Besides, of course, besides my first state championship, 
because you know the first state championship was was special. It feels good. Yeah, because I felt like me being so young, and I felt like I worked so hard to help this team mm -hmm. with me being so young, and the coach is telling me like, bro, we never really had like it's not too many young like dudes doing it like as you, young as you yeah. doing what you're doing coming out here and really putting in work for us yeah. and helping us out. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I felt like I like that one really meant the most to me. Yeah, most definitely. Did that kind of cause. It's funny that you say that, that you had the coaches already telling you, hey, like, there ain't people doing it like you. Like, yeah. as young as you coming in, did that kind of play with your head? Or did that yeah. motivate you more to be like, okay, like, that, I'm going like, to work harder? Yeah, on about that. So when coaches would tell me that, like, it'll make me say to myself, like, okay, like, I'm, real, I'm actually good at this. Like, yeah. I could really do this. Like, they telling me, like, bro, I could really go to the league, like, if I, if I put my mind to it. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, if you stay the course. Exactly. Yeah. They was telling me, bro, you, you do what you do. You, you could get paid for this. And I didn't, I understood that, but I never had nobody, like, tell me that. Like, yeah. these are coaches that have been to the NFL, and yeah. they done been there, done that already. You get what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. for them, like, for coaches that's been to the league could tell me, a ninth grade freshman, that I could go to the league one day, yeah. like, that's motivation for real. It kind of woke you up. Like, exactly. you, you were like, like, hold up. I'm like, damn, like, I'm actually good real. at yeah. this. Like, yeah, yeah I'm good yeah. at it. It's going to get real. But what do you think were some of the... Um, the the qualities that actually allowed you to become where you are today because it, it, the audience or people that the fans of football they always see you on the field they always see you mm -hmm. like as a form of entertainment like you're playing on the field but they don't understand like how much like how much hard work goes into it. it's mm -hmm. a lot of hard work yeah. but what ultimately separated you and allowed you to become William Robert as in like the D1 like, going you have a bunch yeah. of options now so, you're starting here yeah, like it's what you said is a lot of hard work, a lot of stuff that people don't see. There's a lot of stuff that's not on camera. You get what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of things that go into this that people don't see. Like, yeah. we work hard, and I work hard off the field, on the field. Yeah. I'm just like, that's, that's back to what you said earlier. Like, that's what my parents Instead put into you, me. Yeah. Exactly. Like, always just go hard. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of going into the transitioning a little bit to the third stage of your life or you the future what you want for yourself what did you learn looking back so that what did you really now reflecting because you're coming up to a senior year thursday you have a spring game yeah. big game yeah. a lot of college coaches yeah. it's exciting last spring game though yeah, it so it's kind of like the last you know what i mean gonna put out a show what put on the show, baby. now looking back Bigger than football, mm -hmm. like things, principles that you could apply to your life even when you're done after football. What have you learned being here for four years? Being an athlete for four years, being grinding, getting it out. Like, especially with my, like, life, I would say, like, people don't understand, especially us athletes, it's more to life than football, bro. It's, it's, like, we, it's life out there, like, it's stuff we could explore, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just more to life than football, and people don't understand that. But for me being so fortunate and being blessed, like, football, like, I have options. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Like, some people, football is what they have to do. Like, this it's, is real, they, it's real that like, you like, say this, that. Like, this is their way out. Yeah. You get what I'm like, football is some people's way out. Yeah. Like, I'm, God put me in a position where I have options. Like, I can yeah. really do multiple things. And that's what I be trying to tell people. Like, it's and, more to life. And I think that makes you scarier and... Not more scarier, but either to look out for scary for your opponents mm. because they look at you and they see like, hold up, he don't gotta do this, he wants to do this. Exactly. And when you want to do it, it's a different type yeah, of fire because exactly. that same fire isn't the same fire. But yeah. also, it's you like you said, you come from a blessed position where some people have to. They football is their only yeah, thing. Like, like if they if they don't make it with football, they can't. Like and you people from like like where I'm from and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. And like it's football. and I think it puts you on a, a good leadership position because you experience life more than football and you don't mm -hmm. have to do it. So when you can talk to other people and be like, you know what, like, this ain't just about life. There's so much more to life. Yeah. Just having a family, traveling, exactly. just building a business, whatever it may be. Exactly. So actually, what would be your advice to someone? Like, what is, actually, I will save that for now. What does it mean when they say it's deeper than football? Like to me, like what to it you? Mean, what does it what does it mean to me? It's deeper than football. It's deeper than like, as in, like when other people say that to me, like yeah, like they're like what what does like, it mean? Like like I'm not just playing. Like people, okay, when people say it's deeper than football, I feel like they saying that they're not just playing football. Like this is their life, kind of. You get what I'm saying? 
Like it's di- like yeah. like we not just out here playing football. Like this is like some people for cer- for certain people like this is their life. This is gonna dictate their future. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If they go be successful or not. So it's deeper than just playing a game of football. Like people really think about their kid. Like they they gonna have a family one day, bro. Football yeah. is they yeah. set up. Like that's yeah. that's their way. So when they say, how about for you? Like what does that mean? When when it, when I like it's like when is when like when you say it's more to football or it's like yeah when you say like because you said like oh like it's, there's more to football it's not just yeah so in terms of life like experiences and stuff like what does it mean to you like it's deeper than football like to me like when I'm out here I'm not just playing ball like this is like my escape you get what I'm saying so yeah. it's not it's not I'm not just out here playing football I'm getting away from the real world to me you get what I'm saying yeah that's why that's why I love the game so much though. It gives you kind like, of a peace of mind. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not even thinking about anything that's going on outside. Yeah. Like when I'm, in, when I'm on this field, bro, I'm not thinking about nothing else but football, bro. Like it's really like, yeah. it give you, it give you a peace of mind. Yeah. Like those couple hours that you out here, bro, you don't think about yeah. nothing. But when you get home, you get to thinking. You get what I'm saying? It make like when you, when I, when I go home, I miss football. You get it's what I'm saying? Love. Yeah, it's like, true bro, love. No you, girl would do that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, bro. I get home, I miss football, bro. Y'all heard it for the ladies out there. He don't miss it. He miss football. <laughs> I miss fo- I be missing football, man. <laughs> but um, so kind of, kind of to wrap it up, to put that bow tie, because I think mm-hmm. the audience and I've seen like the leader that you are. You're very humble, genuine, and yes, do you want it? Like you said, there's more to life than football, and you're wise enough to realize that, but still be in it. And mm-hmm. it's like a different, yeah. a different game for you, and pretty much. Yeah. But now transitioning to the third stage of your life, your future, right? Where do you see yourself in five years? Because that's the make or break period where you're about five to be done years. with college and NFL is going to become a reality. So where do you see yourself? Five years. It depends. I got a, I got a couple. I'm, I can give you a couple scenarios now. It depends on where I choose. And it, like The one college. you want the most. The one, okay, see, I could either go business like i'm i'm already like a businessman like yeah. that's that's what my that's another thing that my parents enlisted in yeah. bro i could tear my i could tear my knee tomorrow bro football could be over for me you get what i'm saying but if i got a business mindset i could still be a successful man you get what i'm saying yeah so business is also my most important thing like over football to me yeah like as long as i'm doing something in business i could i'll play football i could do this i could do that I also I'm also into acting. I like that. acting. Yeah. Oh, acting. that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I want. I can see it. You have that, that bubbly that's, personality yeah. and genuine. I, I that's cool. A, I want to be in a movie one day for sure. That's another goal of mine. That's real. Actually. That people don't know about. Oh, hey, uh, now they know. You heard it first. <laughs> hey, movie coming soon. You never know. It's starting. You know, when it, yo, that'll be fire. Exactly. But yeah, I'm in the acting business. But yeah. football is usually those yeah. three. Yeah. Well, some of the um, like a oh, big business takeaway. Uh-huh. That you've learned from your um, your father. From my father, big biggest. Because you, you and, gotta, and sorry to cut you off. I, I want you to do, it, but just to like help the audience a little a little. Because you're kind of like your dad, right? He mm-hmm. started, he got it out the mud, and then when he used that money, he didn't only see rapping capitalized off the income yeah. from rapping to then put into business because exactly. he was wise enough to exactly. see like, okay, yeah. I don't want to rely on that income. I need to put it to our investments yeah. and grow the rate of return through something else. Right. And it's kind of going to be the same thing with you. Let's say you continue the path with, let's say you want to go to NFL or something, you use that income and then mm-hmm. put it into the business or vice versa. You just start your business and you put it out. So that mm-hmm. kind of like, what were some of your takeaways from your father? Um, one thing he taught me a lot about business is first marketing. You got to know how to expand your brand. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to know how to, you got to know what people, what people want. You got to know what people want. You get what I'm saying? Like well, your personal want, brand, like William Roberts, that brand. Exactly. Let's just say the brand is, let's just say I'm an actor, all right? And I want to be the biggest actor ever, right? Like, bro, you got to be funny. You yeah. got to be, you can't just be out here doing anything. Like, you can't just be doing, you got you to gotta know what your people want. Yeah. Let's just say with your podcast, you can't just interview anybody. You got to know what they want to hear. Who, like you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. And you know your audience. Exactly. You you got to know your audience. You got to know how to attract more people in. You got to you get what I'm saying? But besides that, um, he always tell me like things about like I haven't really gotten too deep into, you know, like the, the business the, world, the, like, that. like the business business world. Yeah. 
but like houses and like he he investments pretty like much. He, he he taught me he's he's strong on the on the difference between an asset and a liability. Very true. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That that's that's Very one true. thing. I think I think that yeah. if you understand the basic 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 concept right. of what an asset and liability is, and you just determine how to value an asset, and you just that's it. From there is like exactly, and you set up. All right. So now the last two questions. I think you're gonna like the last one, but. Can you share a story that you, that was kind of a building moment for you? Like looking back, it doesn't have to be only football, but kind of life that looking taught you a really big lesson. Looking back, building, building. Like a story. Um, well, now it's a story because you look back. Yeah, yeah now it's a story because I'm looking back. But. <sighs> actually, actually last year, last year, um, Around this time in spring, I was taken out with a heart problem. Oh, yeah, I had myocarditis. That's the inflammation of the heart. I was taken out for five months football. I, I didn't come back until the middle of the season of last year. Damn. All right? But this is what I learned from that, and this is another thing that my dad taught me. And also Coach Harriet, too. Bro, when you get down, you don't lose faith in God, bro. That's what, like, that's that is real. When you get down on yourself and you feel like it's, it's getting harder, like life getting hard on you, bro. Because I was in the hospital for like a week and something, just. It was hard. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like I was, I felt like I was going crazy. Like, bro, don't lose faith in nothing. Keep your mind. Nobody, nobody ever counted you out. Keep your, whatever you want to do, you could do it. That's what, that's another thing my daddy told me. Whatever you want to do, you could do it, bro. As long as you put your mind to it, anything possible. And people and people don't really understand that. Like when you say anything possible, bro, anything is really possible, bro. You could do anything you want to do in this world, bro. It don't matter. Just you could be the best at it. Yeah. Walk by faith, not by sight. Exactly. Exactly. You get it. <laughs> That's real, bro. Yeah. And I think you, you're a great example because there's so many kids that like in Pee Wee right now, little league that want to be D1. They want to be that. Exactly. And you're you're at that position. Exactly. So without even realizing, like, oh, well, obviously you realize, yeah. but. You're in that position where people are like, damn, like you're living proof of anything's possible. Anything. So it's real. Whatever you want to do, bro. You and can do anything. Bro. And God works in mysterious ways. Cause my exactly. last question was gonna be like, what did faith play a role in your journey to becoming exactly, yeah. who you are? What? What? You say that one more time. So I was gonna say, cause you said uh, that the whole big lesson that you took from that was uh -huh. uh, obviously to have faith in God. And uh -huh. then the last question was gonna be, what does have having faith played a role in like to becoming who you are today? Okay. Yeah. Having faith, bro, that's, it's a lot. Like, you can't just, once you get down, bro, you can't just shut everything. You can't shut down. You can't quit. You can't give up on your, like, you got to do it. You got to do it for things that's bigger than you. I don't do this for me, bro. If I was doing something for me, I would have been stopped. I do it for, like, I do it for my mama, bro. I yeah. feel like my mama deserves so much like my mama deserved more than the world bro but i just keep but she just want me to be good at something like if i was doing it for me i would have been stopped i probably would have it was doing it for something bigger exactly you got to do it for something bigger than you bro it's, it's big things is bigger than you you get what i'm saying it could be your brother your sister you could do it for god you could do it for your mama you could do it for but you have to have something bigger than exactly. to actually reach that level exactly that's real bro because you come from a background where like you're blessed, but you're still working hard. Yeah. And for you to be able to say that, it's kind of like, it's not the normal. Exactly. And we realize there's not the normal for you to say that, but it's very like inspiring that you have something bigger than you. It's not a selfish, it's more of a selfless mm -hmm. ambition of yours. Yeah. So it's very real. But bro, I think it was an awesome interview. Honestly, like, yes, very, on, like I, I was having a blast here. It was a really good interview, but. Definitely. Kind of got cut out there, but thank you guys so much for coming to the end, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys feel free, actually, to watch another one somewhere here, and I hope you guys got to saw the the leader side of William Roberts and how humble, how genuine, and the things that you could apply to your life. But anything else you want to leave on? Hey man, like and subscribe, man. Like and subscribe. Oh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for making it to the end, and see you on the next one. Peace.